The Su-57 program, despite its long development timeline and the high expectations set by Russian defense planners, continues to reveal a wide array of persistent problems that severely undermine its claim as a competitive fifth-generation fighter. The aircraft has not yet achieved the levels of performance, reliability, or operational readiness expected from its category, and this situation has become increasingly clear as more details and assessments have emerged over time. Stealth remains a primary concern. The Su-57's design incorporates stealth elements but falls short of the advanced stealth profiles achieved by Western counterparts. The airframe geometry shows multiple compromises that result in higher radar cross-section signatures. Engine inlets, which are relatively large and not masked effectively, along with the exposed engine nozzles, allow radar waves to reflect directly from the turbine blades, increasing detectability. Additionally, the aircraft's external surfaces exhibit visible panel seams and gaps, and the use of radar-absorbent materials RAM, is inconsistent or incomplete across the airframe. These flaws reduce the effectiveness of its low observable features, making it less capable of evading detection by modern radar systems. In operational scenarios where air defenses are dense and integrated with cutting-edge radars, these stealth limitations reduce the Su-57's survivability and tactical advantage. The propulsion system remains a critical bottleneck. The aircraft was intended to operate with a new generation engine known as Product 30, which promised significant improvements in thrust, fuel efficiency, and reduced infrared signature, key factors for sustained supercruise and reduced vulnerability to heat-seeking missiles. However, this engine is still undergoing testing and has not been widely integrated into production models. Until Product 30 becomes operational, the Su-57 relies on the older AL-41 F1 engines, which were originally developed for the Su-35. These engines lack the thrust and efficiency needed for optimal performance in a fifth-generation fighter, limiting acceleration, top speed, maneuverability, and combat range. This shortfall directly impacts mission profiles, making the aircraft less suited for rapid interception or extended strike missions without additional refueling support. India's involvement with the Su-57 program provides a revealing case study on the aircraft's shortcomings. Initially, India engaged in a joint development partnership with Russia, aiming to acquire and co-produce a version of the Su-57 tailored to its specific operational needs. However, Indian military evaluations raised multiple concerns. Analysts in India pointed out that the aircraft's stealth capabilities did not meet their standards, especially when compared to rival aircraft. The performance of the existing engines was considered inadequate, while the avionics suite was deemed insufficiently advanced and lacking integration maturity. Concerns were also expressed regarding the aircraft's radar and sensor fusion capabilities, which are critical for modern network-centric warfare. More fundamentally, Indian decision-makers became wary of the slow development pace, the uncertainty of timelines, and Russia's inability to guarantee timely deliveries in the quantities needed. The combination of these factors led India to withdraw from the joint development project, marking a significant setback for the Su-57 program and underscoring the doubts about the aircraft's readiness and suitability for demanding air forces. The sensor and avionics suite on the Su-57 has yet to reach the expected standards. The aircraft's radar system, which is a critical element for long-range detection, tracking, and targeting, reportedly has limited range and resolution compared to Western and some Chinese fighters. The lack of a fully operational active electronically scanned array AESA, radar system with adequate power and multi-target tracking capability reduces its effectiveness in complex aerial engagements. Furthermore, sensor fusion, the process of combining data from radar, infrared sensors, electronic warfare systems, and other sources into a coherent picture for the pilot, is incomplete or unreliable. This results in lower situational awareness and higher pilot workload, which can be detrimental during fast-paced combat scenarios. The Su-57's electronic warfare EU, and self-protection systems are similarly lagging. Modern combat aircraft must possess advanced electronic countermeasures capable of jamming, deceiving, or evading enemy radar and missile guidance systems. Reports indicate that the Su-57's EW suite is still under development and does not yet provide the robust defense necessary against the latest generation of integrated air defense systems. The limited effectiveness of its defensive aids makes the aircraft more vulnerable during penetration missions, further eroding its strategic value. Production issues compound the aircraft's problems. Manufacturing the Su-57 requires advanced composite materials and precision assembly techniques that Russia's aerospace industry is still mastering. The complexity of production has led to slow delivery rates and increased costs. 
The relatively small number of aircraft produced so far restricts operational deployment, pilot training, and development of tactics suited to the platform. Moreover, logistical challenges persist, with maintenance requirements high due to the complexity and novelty of the systems onboard. Spare parts supply and specialized technical support remain inconsistent, further reducing the aircraft's availability and readiness. Another critical vulnerability lies in the reliance on foreign microelectronics and avionics components. Sanctions and export restrictions have complicated procurement of essential parts, forcing Russian manufacturers to either develop indigenous replacements or operate with inferior alternatives. This dependency introduces uncertainty and potential delays in upgrades and maintenance, undermining the program's long-term sustainability. The Su-57's lack of combat experience remains a glaring deficiency. Unlike some of its peers, the aircraft has not been deployed in real combat conditions, where performance is tested against unpredictable threats, electronic warfare, and pilot stress. Without combat data, it is difficult to confirm the effectiveness of its stealth, sensors, weapons integration, and survivability. This absence of operational validation leaves the aircraft's actual capabilities in question. Pilot training and operational doctrine are also hindered by the program's slow pace and limited fleet size. Developing effective tactics and pilot proficiency requires extensive flight hours and training opportunities, which are scarce given the low number of available aircraft and their maintenance demands. This limits the Air Force's ability to integrate the Su-57 effectively into broader combat strategies and joint operations. The cost factor further complicates the Su-57's future. The expensive development process and low production volume drive up the per-unit price, constraining procurement numbers and forcing continued reliance on older platforms. This financial strain impacts the modernization of Air Forces relying on the Su-57, limiting overall combat power. Finally, the absence of new international customers after India's exit indicates a lack of confidence in the aircraft's operational viability. Other potential buyers have shown hesitation due to the unresolved technical issues, uncertain delivery schedules, and lack of proven combat effectiveness. Without export orders to bolster production and finance further development, the Su-57 program risks stagnation or decline. The Su-57 is beset by fundamental problems that weaken its position as a competitive fifth-generation fighter. These include suboptimal stealth characteristics, underperforming and immature engines, incomplete and less capable sensors and avionics, underdeveloped electronic warfare systems, production and maintenance bottlenecks, dependence on foreign technology vulnerable to sanctions, lack of combat experience, limited pilot training due to fleet size, high costs, and a lack of international market acceptance highlighted by India's withdrawal. Together, these issues raise serious doubts about the Su-57's ability to meet the operational demands of modern aerial warfare and sustain itself as a viable frontline fighter.